So who had the greatest prime of any running back in NFL history? Was it LT, Marshall Falk, Emmett Smith, or how about Jim Brown? These guys are the gold standard for the running back position. Top pedigree, first round picks, all time greats. But even their prime years don't compare to the mind blowing stretch put together by the often forgotten Priest Holmes. Holmes was an undrafted free agent out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, who nearly dropped out of the league at age 28, only to take the NFL by storm in the early 2000s and shatter records during an insane peak that only ended due to a freak neck injury. Just walloped, and Holmes is down. This is not a tale of what could have been. It's about the awe of what was and what may never be again. Or as the man himself put it, if you want to tell my story, it's all about overcoming obstacles and not giving up. Well, if you want to tell the story of Priest Holmes, you got to dive deep. Priest had the first of many setbacks when he tore his ACL during the Texas Longhorns 1995 spring training. He went from presumptive starter to spectator as true freshman Ricky Williams took over. True freshman from Patrick Henry High School. Because Ricky Williams represents everything that is good about college football. Yes, that Ricky Williams. Future Heisman winner Ricky Williams. Guy so crazy talented that Mike Ditka and the Saints traded their entire draft to get him Ricky Williams. First, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round picks in this draft. Heading into the 1996 Big 12 Championship between Texas and Nebraska, most fans came to see Ricky run. Even Mr. All Right, All Right, All Right himself, Matthew McConaughey. The broadcaster for that game was retired Eagles head coach Dick Vermeil. When he asked Texas head coach John Makovic who would be the player to watch, the answer wasn't Ricky Williams. It was Priest Holmes. Oh, Makovic was right. Ricky got absolutely trounced by the Cornhusker defense, and it was Priest Holmes who carried Texas to victory. The reward for Priest's heroics? Going undrafted in 1997. Look, I'm not saying it's ridiculous that nobody took him. NFL scouts don't exactly pound the table for five foot nine backups with a troubled knee, fair or not, that forever altered Holmes' career. Of the NFL's top 15 players in career rushing touchdowns, all but two were first round picks. Why? Return on investment. It's the second greatest motivator next to winning. GMs have to justify their picks, so they'll weather the injuries, contract disputes, and offseason turmoil. For the undrafted guys, just making an NFL roster is an achievement. But that's what Holmes did with the Ravens. And he made the most of it. Priest Holmes turns a three-yard loss into a four-yard gain. And they may have found something with young Priest Holmes, the second-year man out of Texas. In 1998, Holmes led the Ravens in rushing with 1,008 yards. Priest Holmes! Another knee injury saw the Ravens take Holmes' replacement in the 2000 NFL Draft with first-round pick Jamal Lewis. And Baldo, the Super Bowl 35. When Baltimore won the first Super Bowl of the new millennium, Holmes rarely left the bench. The team decided not to re-sign him as he entered free agency as a 27-year-old running back with a history of knee problems. He probably had a better shot of dropping out of the league entirely than ever making another roster, let alone the NFL record books. To accomplish that, Priest would need someone to show a lot of faith. Enter Dick Vermeil. Yes, that broadcaster from the 96 championship game. Vermeil is well known for excelling at two things, crying. I hope very much my players can understand where I'm coming from. Top notch, high end crying and resurrections of both declining franchises. 12 years have gone by. Since the Eagles have been a winner. And derailed careers. Our ball game. Now we just flat ass kick the f out of them. We just get after their ass. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. Vermeil called Holmes personally to pitch him on coming to Kansas City. Just think about that for one second. The brand new head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, a Super Bowl winner, and one of seven head coaches who have taken multiple teams to the title game, didn't just recruit Priest Holmes. 
he told him exactly what KC was planning. They were going to sign Holmes to be Vermeil's latest Swiss Army knife in the backfield and try to work out a trade with St. Louis to get another player whose career was derailed by a significant knee injury. Now we've got Trent Green down. We've got Trent Green down. Quarterback Trent Green. It hurts, but uh, that's, that's what this business is all about. It happened. Vermeil called Holmes back. They got their quarterback, and it was time to go to work. Right there, Priest. There you go. That's it. Good timing on it. That's the way it should look. Good. Thank you, miss. It would not take long for Priest to reward Vermeil's faith. Green to throw. Again, looks up the field. Pump fake. Dumps it in the air flat to Holmes at the 15. Angles near side. Tiptoes into the end zone. After struggling his first two games in red and gold, Holmes burst onto the scene with 225 yards from scrimmage and three scores against Washington. Unbelievable, Priest Holmes. A couple weeks later, he went for a buck 50 on the ground against Pittsburgh. And it goes down inside! Touchdown inside! Seven weeks into the Holmes Vermeil partnership, the Chiefs may have only won a single game, but they were laying the foundation for success with a powerful running attack. Holmes' 530 rushing yards at that point in the season was a respectable number, albeit slightly lower than his Week 8 opponents. San Diego Chargers rookie sensation, Ladanian Tomlinson. But then again, LT is LT. Inside the nine, first and goal, Tomlinson slashing inside for a touchdown. Concerning that most teams wouldn't have even given Holmes a roster spot, being in the same conversation as Tomlinson was pretty good, but not for Holmes. He didn't want to be good. Holmes wanted to be great. And in week eight, he was. He gashed the Chargers for 181 yards and a crucial touchdown and a five-point victory. That's a touchdown. That is a touchdown. That's a touchdown. And Priest was just warming up. Wide open. Priest turns. Holmes breaking free. Priest turns. He's a breakaway threat every time he touches the football. In week 13 against Oakland, he nearly topped 300 total yards, and he scored twice. Out to Holmes. Lead block by Spears, a block by Shields, and there he goes! A foot race on the play with Dorsett. He's in for the touchdown! After trailing Tomlinson earlier that year, Priest's second half surge propelled him to a league best 1,555 rushing yards. That made Holmes the first undrafted player of the Super Bowl era to win the NFL rushing title. Sideline and forced out of bounds. And that will be the rushing record for Priest Holmes. I'm telling you, he's running as well as any back in the National Football League right now. Of all the great ball carriers who have worn the red, white, and gold, Haynes, Garrett, Podolak, Delaney, Allen, Okoye, none, none have had more rushing yards in a single season than the Priest. But that distinction and all those yards didn't correlate to Ws. The Chiefs finished just six and 10, and they were 16th in scoring. That wouldn't be good enough for Holmes or the Chiefs' front office. In the 2002 offseason, Vermeil and Chiefs GM Carl Peterson landed Pro Bowl tackle Willie Rofe in a trade with New Orleans. They also got a boost from a couple of raw prospects like 5'8 running back Dante Hall and offensive lineman Brian Waters, both of whom spent time developing in NFL Europe. Let's just say the results, very encouraging. They go! He is gone! Dante Hall turned into the league's best return man, while Willie Rofe and Brian Waters solidified one of the greatest offensive lines in NFL history. Wayne Rudd is saying to himself, I cannot believe Priest Holmes beat me. In the 2002 opener, Priest Holmes scored four touchdowns against the Browns. Oh, what an individual effort by Holmes! In one game, he'd already amassed half of his rushing touchdowns from the previous year. On a week three trip to Foxborough, Holmes went for 198 scrimmage yards with three more touchdowns. Priest Holmes, does he get in? Touchdown! He's been a pick and shovel football player. Ricky Williams was given, and he's earned it, he's great, but Priest Holmes has earned every little single yard and foot he's ever gotten. He had double-digit touchdowns entering week six. Herman told us before the game, I don't care if they pass for 500 yards, we must control Priest Holmes. My, oh my, Priest Holmes! Slow 40 time at the Combine? Who cares? Holmes had all the speed that he needed. And the power, and the balance, and the vision. 
20 touchdowns. It is a new franchise record. I've never been involved in a game where the running back has damn near 200 yards. In his first five seasons in the NFL, Priest scored 21 touchdowns. In a 12-game span in 2002, he'd more than doubled that total. Priest Holmes. Look at Holmes go down the sideline. An explosion of speed. To put it in a way my fantasy football geeks would understand, Priest was also the unquestioned king of fantasy. He was a glorified cheat code in 2002, averaging 31.4 fantasy points per game. Turns it, goes to the end zone. Put up another one for Priest Holmes, the NFL leader. Entering week 15, Holmes had a league best 21 rushing touchdowns, just four shy of Emmett Smith's single season record of 25, and 24 total touchdowns, two shy of Marshall Falk's record of 26. And first and goal, and second and goal, it's Priest Holmes standing up. Good chance that Priest Holmes will be the record holder. And then this happened. He's breaking into the clear. Can he catch it? The fourth setback of Holmes' career cut short his 2002 season. He missed the last two games and his shot at the record books, and yet he still finished with 2,287 total yards, leading the league two years in a row. His touchdowns propelled the Chiefs' offense from 16th to 1st, and 30.8% of those points went through the high priest. Despite all that, the team went just 8-8, eight and eight, and the culprit was fairly obvious. KC already had the number one offense in 2002 and set the record for fewest offensive turnovers, but finished dead last in total defense. They were the first team since the 86 Dolphins to lead the NFL in points and still miss the playoffs entirely. You look at the Kansas City Chiefs, they couldn't stop anybody. Fortunately for them, the 2003 NFL Draft was freaking loaded with defenders. Sitting on the 16th overall pick, GM Carl Peterson had his pick of Pro Bowl caliber players like Namdi Asamoa, OCU Manura, and future defensive MVP Troy Palomalu. And who did he take? The Kansas City Chiefs select Larry Johnson, running back, Penn State. A running back! He traded down for a running back. Are you kidding me? And I'll tell you what, for Kansas State's defense, like we said, to be as bad as it was, it's a shame, but Priest Holmes, you have to be concerned now to bring a running back into the fold. And here we go again. With Holmes nursing a hip injury and trying to renegotiate his contract, Peterson opted for some extra security. Having heard this story before, Priest didn't rest on his 34 touchdowns in two seasons. No, he rehabbed his tail off and he showed up to training camp ready to roll. When he still didn't have a new contract, the soft-spoken Holmes pressed the issue in front of cameras for the whole league to hear. Priest, tell me, what are you going to need to do to get ready to play on opening day physically? Oh, get paid. <laughs> get paid? <laughs> get paid, because I'm ready. All right, we're going to talk to Carl Peterson about that, and you and I will get together after the game. I'll tell you what he said. Did Carl Peterson like taking shots from his player on TV? I'm guessing probably not. But Vermeil didn't care for Peterson's decision to draft Larry Johnson, who received just 20 carries his rookie season. Vermeil wanted his running back, and Holmes wanted his contract. A month before turning 30 years old, he got it. A whopping four-year extension, reportedly worth over $40 million. Priest finally made it. In the upcoming season, Holmes would once again reward Vermeil's unwavering faith. We're not trying to uh, recreate what we've already done. We're trying to break the, the, the goals that we made from last year. After Holmes' injury cost him a chance to repeat as the rushing champ in 2002, take a guess who ended up winning it. That's right, our old pal Ricky Williams. And the runner-up was LT. In the 2003 opener, we got round four of Holmes v. Tomlinson. It's definitely short. After trading body blows in their first three go-arounds, Priest went for the knockout, lighting up San Diego's defense with 183 total yards and two rushing touchdowns. Oh, looking for it. Left side has it and more. Down the sideline. Ten, five, touchdown. Priest Holmes looked okay, didn't he? Going up against Pittsburgh the following week, KC put up 41 points on the prestigious Steelers defense. The Kansas City Chiefs have run 22 plays. 14 have been handled by Priest Holmes. Any questions why? Holmes rushed for 122 yards and added three scores as the Chiefs started 2-0 for the first time under Dick Vermeil. Holmes has the first, he's an open field. Welcome to beat. Next week, 
They made it 3-0, and and three straight games over 100 total yards for Holmes, who tacked on two more rushing scores. And hopped in for the touchdown in second today. Running game, there's the running game. The hot start propelled Holmes to the league lead in touchdowns, and for the second year in a row, he'd set himself up for a shot at history. Slight problem, though. Priest home the block from Ripon, can't find much room on the side. Priest went scoreless two weeks in a row while the entire Chiefs offense sputtered. At long last, the defense was there to bail them out. We, we make them throw it, they can't block us, man. Cannot block it. The Chiefs got John Browning right in the face of Clinton Portis. Carl Peterson had assembled a motley crew of defensive free agents in the offseason, and they were finally clicking. Avon fumbles the ball. Maslowski's got it for Kansas City. There ain't no quit in this group. It's gonna be like that all year. When the offense got back on track in week six, the rest of the league didn't have a prayer of stopping. Holmes on the run. That's back his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. KC wasn't just back on track, they were pummeling opponents. Holmes reverses his field. What a block by Trent Green, are you kidding? 35 to five. Priest rattled off seven more touchdowns over the next four games, seven. Toss to Holmes, cut back, touchdown. During their league best 9-0 start, the Chiefs' average margin of victory was 15.2 points per game. This is some well-oiled offensive machine. Despite their group's success, when asked by Michael Silver to describe how much of a component Priest Holmes was to the team's perfect record, Dick Vermeil said that Holmes was not a component, he was the component. As offensive coordinator Al Saunders put it, what does Priest mean to us? What's an engine to a car? That's a great quote, Coach. By the time the Red Hot Chiefs were rolling into Cincinnati for a foggy Week 11 matchup, it might have sounded ridiculous when Bengals receiver Chad Johnson said this. I might get fined for this. We will win. That's a guarantee. Look, Ocho Cinco said a lot of stuff. But in this case, you got to give it to him. He was spot on. Here they come. Time he goes. The four and five Bengals flipped the script on KC and dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides. Part of what you do, you want to make your name, you get the big play. They clogged up rushing lanes on defense and became the last team in 2003 to keep Holmes out of the end zone. And Kansas City on offense is sleepwalking. KC's perfect start was over and so was their dominance. After injuries piled up, the Chiefs defense didn't just decline, it fell off a cliff. To keep the team's title aspirations alive, Priest and the offense would have to be perfect. Sorry for the spoiler, they weren't. Nobody can be perfect for an entire season. But I'll say this, these Chiefs came damn close. Chiefs have never failed to come up with points on the board in the red zone this season. Holmes, touchdown! In week 12 against Oakland, 100 of Trent Green's 244 passing yards were to Priest Holmes. That's why he's one of the best running backs in the National Football League. He added 91 yards rushing and a touchdown as the Chiefs barely avoided back-to-back -back losses with a last-second field goal. After clamping down on LT and the Chargers offense in the opener, Tomlinson took advantage of the hobbled Chiefs defense with 123 total yards and a touchdown in week 13. And off to Tomlinson, breaks into the clear, could go all the way, he's at the 50. One of Dick Vermeil's season-long laments is the inability of his team in the second half to put somebody away. So round five goes to LT, right? Guess again. Out of bounds at the one, or is it a touchdown? Yes, it is. Yes, a it touchdown. Is. Holmes topped Tomlinson with 186 yards and two scores of his own in another narrow Chiefs victory. Oh. Kind of a... <laughs> Priest wasn't just padding his stats and running up the score and blowout wins. They were in a three-way race with New England and Indianapolis for home field advantage and a wild card bye. 10, five, touchdown! You saw the Kansas City defenders go to the ground. So when I said the offense would have to be perfect, I wasn't kidding. The Chiefs needed every single one of his touchdowns to compete. He entered week 15 with 19 touchdowns, six behind Emmett's record and seven behind Falk's. To break both, he would need eight more and only had three games left to get them. Well, I gotta say it, there's nothing like facing the Lions to help jumpstart your engine. Left side, picking his way through. Holmes, touchdown! When Priest added three touchdowns against Detroit, he joined Emmett Smith as the only player to score 20 or more rushing touchdowns in multiple seasons. Three down, five to go. Unfortunately for KC, Minnesota stopped him dead in their tracks in week 16. 
Phil, these Chiefs, their last four road games have given up 124 points. By the time backup Michael Blaylock fumbled in the third quarter, Priest had just five carries to his name, and the Chiefs were down 31-0. The only sensible thing for Vermeil to do would have been to sit his players and get ready for the season finale. But that's not Vermeil's style. Holmes back into the backfield for the Chiefs. The pitch for Holmes. That's more like the Kansas City offense we've come to know. With Blaylock injured, he kept Larry Johnson on the bench and asked Priest to do the impossible. And this dude almost did. Touchdown. Rushing touchdown number 23 on the season for Priest Holmes. You could almost see it when you watch the Kansas City offensive lineman and offensive team, the frustration, and they finally score this touchdown. Holmes scored three times in under 11 minutes of play. That pulls him into a tie with Emmett Smith. Most rushing touchdowns in one season all time. Just amazing. Two more touchdowns and he would break both records. Despite the tumultuous back end to their 2003 campaign, the Chiefs still had a chance to finish undefeated at home, stay ahead of the Colts for second in the AFC, and as Bears All-Pro linebacker Brian Urlacher was certainly aware, they had a chance to get Holmes into the record books. Handoff is to Priest Holmes. Brian Urlacher, good tackle on the play, no gain. This is what Urlacher wants. That he, he feeds on that. In week 17, Chicago's defense suffocated Vermeil's wide open offense and hit Holmes with a wave of defenders every single time he touched the ball. He wants to run down a running back and that's, that's what he's made for. Priest was limited to 12 yards on five carries to begin the game, but everybody knows it only takes one big run to get things going. And he wants these records back. Late in the first, the Chiefs got their big run. A quarterback draw by Trent Green. Trent Green's nine-yard scamper was the Chiefs' longest rush to that point in the game. But more importantly, it got Holmes into scoring range. Priest Holmes takes it outside and gets inside the 10. After getting stuffed all game, Priest broke loose to the outside. Was he nervous as he stood on the cusp of history? You tell me. It's a key block on the perimeter. Yes. Cuts back. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown. Priest Holmes has now set an all-time record. His 26th touchdown officially broke Emmett Smith's record and tied Marshall Falks. One more to go, folks. Priest would have his chance on the very next drive. Vermeil tried to get him outside again. This gets pushed back by Erlacher, and Erlacher made the tackle. Not happening. Signed, Brian Erlacher. Good job of penetration by Brian Erlacher. Approaching the fourth quarter, Priest was running out of time. Yeah. The tipped pass by Dexter McLeon and the ensuing pick landed KC right back in Bears territory. Again, Vermeil tried to get Holmes outside only to be swarmed by white jerseys. Priest again. Richardson with a block. There's no gain this time. On fourth and one, up 11 points against a stagnant Bears offense and not much left to play for, Priest needed a chance. An illogical, emotional, placement of faith. Let's see what Dick Vermeil will do. And just as he had done with Priest before, Vermeil gave it to him. He kept his kicker on the sideline and put the ball in Priest's hands. Look for Priest Holmes here. This time, however, there would be no sweep or toss to the outside. This time, he charged right towards the obstacle in front of him. Here he goes. He's up. All five foot nine inches of Priest Holmes leapt over two Bears defenders, his Hall of Fame blocker wheel shields, and into history. Priest Holmes picks up his 27th touchdown of the year. 27 scrimmage touchdowns in a single season. He did it. Ladies and gentlemen, he did it. Hell yes. And he now holds the Kansas City Chiefs all-time touchdown record with 61 and gets one more hug from Dick Vermeil. All right, so here's my second spoiler of the day. Neither Priest nor Coach Vermeil is in the Hall of Fame. Don't ask me why. All I know is this moment between coach and player, two men who'd accomplished so much in such little time, is as pure a football moment as you will ever see. Gentlemen, we got ourselves a football team. 
one at a time, but we got ourselves a football team. When the post-game press conference came around, however, Coach Ramil sounded like anything but a 13-3 head coach with the NFL's most potent offense and a first-round bye. His beleaguered defense was getting gouged by every single running back they faced, and their first opponent in the playoffs just happened to be the number two offense out of Indianapolis featuring Peyton Bleeping Manning. Every once in a while you start thinking how many good athletes you have on our team, you know, and you turn around and watch another team warm up and say, oh, they're not good. They've got some good ones too. As he had done all year, Priest gave it everything he had. Holmes breaking tackles. Look at them fight to the 28. Oh, they love that here. He finished with 176 rushing yards, 32 more receiving, and two touchdowns in the only playoff game in NFL history not to feature a single punt. Zero. Never happened in the entire history of the NFL playoffs that a team, both teams, have not punted. It's happened today so far. But the Chiefs ended a season of historic scoring, one touchdown short. Try to get it to their speediest open field runner. Now they're going to throw it up the middle, and Holmes tackled immediately at the 41. He wanted a lateral, but there was no one there. The game is over. The Colts with a remarkable offensive effort here in Kansas City. They never made the playoffs again under Dick Vermeil, and in 2004, they would become the first team since the 1975 Buffalo Bills to score over 30 points a game and miss the playoffs. As for Priest, he was just entering the fourth quarter of his career-defining run. Priest Holmes, touchdown! What else? In 2004, Holmes averaged almost two touchdowns per game. Inside the 10, still on his feet, into the end zone. At age 31, he was on the best pace of his career and still delivering epic performances. Holmes on first and goal, up and over, touchdown Chiefs. When he scored his 14th touchdown against Tampa Bay in week nine, it marked 66 touchdowns over his last 38 games. Nobody, nobody has ever had a better stretch, period. And 10 and Priest Holmes, it's a touchdown. The stretch was so brilliant that even after barely playing for most of his career, Holmes skyrocketed to 14th on the all-time rushing touchdowns list. He currently sits at 15th overall. That's a little bit of blocking and a whole lot of your NFL leading rusher, Priest Holmes. Statistically, he is far and away the best undrafted running back of the Super Bowl era. His 76 rushing touchdowns after the start of his age 28 season are tied for the most all-time and his record of most consecutive games with at least 50 yards rushing might be the hardest stat to topple. Priest's historic run and his 2004 season both ended after he suffered the third major knee injury of his career. This time, however, his job would be waiting for him. Vermeil put any potential running back controversy to bed earlier that season when a reporter asked what Larry Johnson would need to do to earn a start. It's time to take your diapers off and go to work. Priest would always be Vermeil's lead back in KC. Finally, a full decade after a torn ACL derailed his career in 1995, Priest had become irreplaceable. Priest Holmes now has more touches of the football than anyone in Chiefs history. They stay with it. Priest is in for the touchdown. Grabbed by the ankles, gets away, and fights to the end zone for a touchdown. And here's Priest Holmes breaking out. There goes Priest. Touchdown, Casey. But the moment was fleeting. Seven games into the 05 season, it was this hit by the Chargers defense that resulted in the spinal injury, which proved to be the final obstacle of his career. Training staff of the Chiefs ran on that field in a hurry. Dick Vermeil retired after the season and his magnificent run with Priest Holmes came to an end. We're very disappointed to announce today that we're placing uh, Priest Holmes on injured reserve. Also in 2005, Priest's single season scrimmage touchdown record was broken by Seahawks running back Sean Alexander and then again by Ladanian Tomlinson in 2006. Into the end zone, Charger fans are witnesses to history! Maybe losing that record is why Holmes' career, like for Meals, wasn't deemed Hall of Fame worthy. Neither had long stays in the league and neither holds a record for any career totals. Priest sits way down at 46th on the career rushing yards list. 10 spots below him is Terrell Davis. Gail Sayers is at 149th, yet both are Hall of Famers. So some questions. What if Priest Holmes had played with a slightly better defense? What if he'd had one less injury? What if he'd left as a free agent to a different team? 
Would he have a gold jacket? It's all up for debate. Undebatable, however, is that after being told that he'd likely never play again, Holmes had one more miracle left in him. In 2007, he joined the Chiefs for training camp. Even though his comeback wouldn't last long, by then he'd already accomplished his goal. He got to leave the game on his terms and prove that there was no hurdle he could not overcome. We're just a one day away from Thanksgiving. There's just so much more uh, that I've been given as far as just opportunity and so much more life that I have to experience. And at this time, I'm announcing my retirement from the NFL. How does Priest Holmes define his own career? As he said, if you want to tell my story, it's all about overcoming obstacles and not giving up. <laughs>